Hello everybody and welcome to Toy Tutor You Curator's Corner episode number five. My name's Sean Brosnan, I'm one of the curators at Toy Tutor Otago Settlers Museum here in Dunedin and during this great coronavirus lockdown of 2020 I'm making these uh, short videos uh, to provide some infotainment to potential museum visitors who can't at the moment actually physically uh, visit the museum. So I've titled this particular one uh, The Mystery of the Immigration Barracks. But before we get to exactly what I consider that mystery to be, perhaps I should explain what the immigration barracks were. So it takes us back to the very beginning point of Dunedin in March and April of 1848 when the John Wycliffe and the Philip Lang finally arrived here after their five month long journeys from Britain. Now, to the shock and horror perhaps of the passengers, they found that when they arrived at Port Chalmers, there was nothing available on shore by way of accommodation. And so they were going to be stuck on board the ships for a little bit longer until the men of the um, Pioneer Party could go on up to Dunedin and begin to construct something on shore. And that's what the immigration barracks were. They got stuck in, and with the help of local Maori, they made some pretty primitive uh, shelter sheds on the Dunedin foreshore. And we'll talk a little bit later about exactly what they were like. But that's what we're talking about. So the mystery is why when we look at the 1849 sketch of Dunedin from Stafford Street by Charles Kettle, the subject of the previous episode, why can't we see in that scene, which shows a whole panorama of uh, early Dunedin, surely the immigration barracks must be in the scene. So why aren't they there identified? Why can't we see them? Or can we? So let's get to it. Here's the sketch. And here's a version that we've made up which highlights Kettle's original handwritten annotations which as you can see don't identify any immigration barracks and that just seems really odd to me. In contrast, this sketch that Kettle had made the previous year in May 1848 which looks back towards the town from the shoreline around the edge of Bell Hill does show two buildings that Kettle labels, Kettle labels Immigrants' houses. Now, I use as an E rather than the I. I'd use the I because they're immigrants coming in, but anyway, that's by the by. Those are the two barracks. Now, the building labelled here as Mr. Anderson's store is the site that would shortly afterwards be vacated so that the original first church could be built there. So that provides us with a common point between the two sketches and shows us the triangular wedge that they formed with each other from one barracks on the beach up to the church site and back down to the other barracks further along the beach. So where exactly is this triangle of land where the three most significant buildings of the early settlement were to be found? According to Dr Hocken, the shelters or barracks as they were called were situated along the beach which extended from the junction of High and Rattray streets to Dowling Street. But even more precise is this description by Lachlan Langlands, an 1848 settler who wrote an article about them for the newspaper in 1905 and here's what he had to say. The first barracks, sometimes known as the English, were erected on the beach below where Mises Sargood's warehouse now stands, by the male passengers of the John Wycliffe in March 1848. It was a very primitive building composed of upright mapo posts about 18 inches in the ground, laced with flax, rushes and grass for the ends and sides, the roof being thatched with grass. There were no partitions, families curtained themselves off with such material as could be spared. And then he describes the second barracks, which were known as the Scottish barracks. The second barracks were erected on the arrival of the Philip Lang in April 1848, about opposite Mises Sargood's warehouse, also on the beach, below the terrace on which First Church then stood. It was made in the same manner as the John Wycliffe's, only larger, being about 60 feet long with one door. Now Sargood's warehouse was the quite enormous building then from about 1878 until 1969, occupied the big open space that is now the Dowling Street car park. So, here. And somewhere within that extended space were all three of those critical early settler constructions, the two barracks and the church. So let's go back now to Kettle's 1849 view and check that space. Are these faint outlines in the original sketch perhaps the two barracks buildings? And somehow, in all the reproductions that followed, they've changed shape, been recoloured, or otherwise altered so that they look nothing like the primitive flax and grass huts that they actually were. Now you can imagine from Langland's description that neither barracks was particularly cosy, especially when it rained, as it unfortunately did 
for an extended period in mid-1848 as winter arrived in Dunedin. Reverend Thomas Burns gives some insight into just how miserable that was in this account of one of his early visits to the barracks. I went to preach the bulk of the people in a long barracks made of grass and rushes situated on the beach. I found my fellow passengers sitting in almost total darkness, the rain pouring through the roof, the floor in a miserable condition, women with young children on their knees, mid-leg deep in mire and puddle. In all my life, I never preached with so sad a heart. So perhaps next time you're walking along Lower High Street near the Queen's Gardens, or perhaps down Dowling Street, you'll take a glance over at the big open space of the car park and spare a thought for those pioneers of 1848, and especially the young mothers among them, nursing their children while mired in mud and misery. In a sense, they were in lockdown too. So I hope you've enjoyed that little story, and perhaps if you have, you might like to check out uh, the other episodes in this series by subscribing to the channel and even clicking on the bell icon so that you get notified when another um, episode is posted. Meantime, uh, be kind, stay home, stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you next time.